Yes, uh, but well, yeah, the, the thing is, because everything I've been saying has, okay, so I'm not going to jinx us. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, but what I do want to say is you, you got to just prepare, because if you notice, when does it crest? Wednesday afternoon. All right, Wednesday afternoon. We're looking at what's going on today and tomorrow. So we got to get through Saturday, Sunday, and early Monday with heavy rainfall. And then obviously we got to look for a lot of that water to eventually make it to the Amy River. And for a lot of areas in Ascension and further downstream, it takes a few days for that water to push downstream. So it's got to come. If we get, the, we may not get anything in Ascension Parish. And I've been trying to tell people that in Ascension, like, well, we haven't had any rain. What if we don't get the rain? It looks like a lot of it's going to go west of us. Well, it doesn't matter. There could be a line that literally skips across Ascension, clips, Northern East Baton Rouge Parish, Point Capi, uh, the Feliciana. So you got to think about all that water goes into the Comet River. Has to come down. All right, tributary. that meets up with the Amy, all yeah. those little tributaries. And then same thing, if we get a ton of rainfall in Southern Mississippi, the Tickfa, the Comey, the Amy, somewhere. it all comes down the Amy. So it may eventually get to Bayou Manchac, Port Vincent, French Settlement, and all those other areas along the Amy. And then obviously, again, too, it depends. Like just like last week, we had, or not last week, excuse me, five weeks ago. Last month. Remember uh, last month where we had all that heavy rainfall downtown right. where we had about eight to ten inches in that range, or about eight to nine inches. And you saw what it did. I mean, you see how quickly our little drainage ditches and a lot of these little bayous that we have around here, how quickly they swelled. And that was literally over two hour time span. So this could be, a, this is expected to be a longer time span. Now we may not get that amount of rainfall in one spell, but there's still, I don't, again, there may not be enough time before that next wave comes around for the waters to recede a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So again, they may not drop as much until that next wave comes around. So again, we're still kind of looking for that rain to come through. And I just want to show you, obviously, I'm going to back out of here and kind of navigate a little bit because I do want to show you a uh, big picture because this is again the one that's been scary and uh, Senator Graves and everybody else have been kind of watching uh, obviously the mayor has been watching this one very closely because this is the one you keep seeing out here this is Comey at Jura Road and you see by the time we get to about late Sunday going into Monday we get at 34.5 and the old record back in 2016 was 34.2. So that could be a new record. Oh, wow. All right, if you think about, and for all of you who have or were here back in 2016, you gotta think about how many areas were flooded and all that water slowly creeping its way downstream because we, it all started up in Zachary and Baker got flooded and then it moved down to Greenwell Springs and started spreading out. Mm -hmm. And then you remember making that move through Shenandoah and then it started inching further wide and then started going down into areas such as Prairieville and into the Tigerland area. And then it started pushing down and spreading out across Santa Ma and Dutchtown and started going wider into port. So again, that was kind of a, an issue as it started to slowly go downstream. So are you saying that even though we might, a lot of this rain, the, the heavier rains that we thought we might get or, or going elsewhere, we might be weeks even before we know the well the I, no I mean days I say day or, I would okay, say days but what I was but no the, um, the week and I do want to show you this mm -hmm. I'll step back John and uh, you can kind of I'm going to guide you through this because also mm -hmm. cool this is a nice site for everybody who is monitoring the stages because it also picks up a lot of areas in between like again I do want to show you let's just say we wanted to look at the river gauge downtown you could see that the Mississippi River at Baton Rouge, again, this is just for the downtown area. Um, if I step back a little bit here, you'll see that also, um, but let's just say here, right around Government Street, or excuse me, yeah, the Amy River Basin at Ward Creek at Government Street. And you can see that the levels have already jumped to 33.06, all right? So you can see the levels are starting to climb because uh, they usually sit below 32. So we've already jumped by a foot in some areas, uh, but I do want to kind of give you the timeline for all this, John, because today we're dealing with, at least for the next or short term here, I would say until early evening, maybe going until about midnight, it's going to be wind out there and some moderate rainfall, maybe some heavy downpours in the mix. Then we'll start to see that heavier rainfall move in overnight. 
And as that happens, our attention goes to flash flooding. Flash flooding and street flooding. And that's all flash flooding means it's just a bunch of rain in smaller pockets, but in, a, in a, all at one time, all right? So the concern will be that flash flooding, all right? Then once all that water falls in your backyard, maybe in your drainage dish in front of your house, uh, maybe in a parking lot, maybe in some of the roadways here, something, you know, okay? It's gotta go somewhere. We're a concrete jungle now. We've built up a lot of these places. So that water's gotta go somewhere. So what it does is it takes a little time. With continued, you gotta think about this, continued rainfall on that. Then it starts to go into, let's say, if it was the Mall of Louisiana, you see that big drainage ditch out there? Then it eventually goes into there. That swells up, possibly overtopping its banks. That goes eventually into Bayou Manchek. That goes back into the Amy River. And that's why the process eventually, it takes a little bit longer. So then the concern is pushing downstream to some of these other areas. And if that water is coming in so quickly, we always throw out the term backwater flooding just because water has nowhere to go. So, I mean, uh, you can't, if water has nowhere to go, it finds a spot because it just really has to. So it pushes outward. Um, again, I do want to show you this one, and a lot of people are worried. So the long term, and you see here with the purple dot, is the major flooding. Everybody's concerned about the Mississippi River. And if you look closely, we may get to about 43 feet. Good news is this is really not going to be a concern for us immediately. Uh, the concern was in New Orleans. It wasn't a threat. We just need to actually see how much rainfall happens with Barry well outside of our viewing area. Um, I don't know if you, if you guys were paying attention earlier because a lot of pretty much everything to the east of the Rockies eventually filters eventually filters into the Mississippi River. So all this rain is eventually going to creep north. So the Arkansas River, right. you get to the Tennessee River, you get to the Ohio River Valley, you get to the Missouri River, all of them, the Red River, all of them eventually come back into the Mississippi. So if we start seeing flooding rains across portions of Tennessee, mm -hmm. across portions of Arkansas, across, uh, you name it, Mississippi, that comes down the Mississippi River. So our concern may not be immediately, but yeah. we could be watching it closer, say, maybe a week from now, yeah, maybe two weeks from now. Could it be weeks from now oh, yeah. before we, we could, really yeah, know Yeah, we could be the seeing the water levels. The forecast can obviously change yeah. uh, well down the road. Yeah. So, but right now it does show off, show by the time we get to the end of the month, by the 26th, that we're finally getting back into the moderate category because we've been above flooding for so long at this point. So, uh, so again, obviously a lot to kind of watch uh, as we continue to move forward. Um, also, I do want to let viewers know, um, if you guys have questions or concerns, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to answer as much as possible because uh, obviously that's what I'm here for. So <laughs> yeah, because, because Jesse Gunkel is a great resource to have when you have any kind of weather related or science related questions. Oh yeah. He delves in deep and I, I really, I'm fascinated yeah. by it. That's why I was just kind of yeah, wrapped by this. Yeah, I'm discussion. trying to keep up, you know, because obviously social media and, you know, between here right. and I, do, I also want to point out that uh, obviously if you can't catch us here 100% of the time and you got to get in your car and you got to drive around. We partnered up with iHeartRadio Baton Rouge and they have been uh, obviously a phenomenal partner for us. We've been, I've been actually kind of, every time you see me step off the screen here, I'm trying to step in over there just to help <laughs> out. You know, I, they've been doing a great job and again, they've been calling trying to keep up and I want to thank those guys over there too because they're informing people obviously if you're out on the roadways mm -hmm. or even for crews that are out there helping again because you got to think about it there are people out there helping others right now yep. and they are not sitting in front of their TV right, nope. or All sitting right. On so you got to think about this and that yeah. I think the big takeaway with that is you have to realize that so don't go out if you don't have to don't be on the roadways I mean and you, big thing is just just be smart because if you go out then you get stuck eventually overnight say hey I, it doesn't look bad I still want to go have some fun downtown and party or whatever and come in. but that rain arrives later on tonight mm -hmm. you get stuck out in it and guess what those poor folks that have been battling and helping out all afternoon and evening all those emergency crews and stuff have to come out there and get you well that's the case in any kind of weather event you know we've talked so much about how this is different from the flood of 2016 it's different from 
uh, Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. We were talking a little bit earlier. In fact, we're going to have some information from uh, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. But you remember, mm -hmm. that's when we heard, so that's when I first became aware of who, he was the parish president there in uh, Plaquemines mm -hmm. Parish at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was you know, so much concern about some of the flooding that was happening, particularly in Plaquemines Parish with some, uh, it was a, a lot of pollution involved. It was kind of some scary things. So mm -hmm. it, it, these yeah, events Yeah, that gentleman changed. knows his parish. Oh, yeah. Every yeah. inch of it, you talk to him, he knows everything. And so. he's been covering it today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because uh, So we want to show you some, some video that the um, uh, lieutenant governor um, was shooting himself when he was taking pretty much a We're ride around the there. Road, here at Myrtle Road, it's crossed under the highway on to the other side through the culverts, and it's traveling north and south. Uh, filling up all the cow pastures, but um, as you can see, it's not far from coming on the road, uh, and um, within a few hours, uh, this road will probably be unpassable. Yeah, that's a little bit frightening, and you know, again, he knows what he's he, talking about, he knows particularly that area. when it comes to Plaquemines Parish. So. Uh, yeah, appreciate him uh, just giving us some insight as to what he's seeing there. The other people there have been seeing as well. Are, are we still uh, going to talk about this boat, Captain? Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. Um, can we put that video up here? I'm not... There we go. Yeah, so this is a Coast Guard rescue, um, and this is something that Jesse alluded to, and uh, we were talking about, like, when you are putting yourself in possible harm's way, yep. rescue crews have to leave from whatever important information or important job they were doing to come out and help you, which is still an important job. And so unfortunately, this guy here, you can see his the, in the uh, left bottom corner, he had a little gash uh, after trying to rescue some people. Yeah, I wrote down Deputy Robert. I think I missed part of his name. Do y'all have his name? Because I kind of want to just give him a shout out because, you know, again, he's, he's doing his job, you know, uh, putting himself again in harm's way and he gets hurt. Did you say a windshield shattered in this? Or did he? Robert Wagner, thank you very much. Well, and, and again, thank you uh, to Robert Wagner just for, for putting yourself out there in, in, uh, in harm's way and you know, you got injured. Hopefully it's gonna be okay. He's kind of smirking in that picture. So hopefully nothing uh, too terrible damage there. But uh, yeah, these guys are out there doing their jobs and it's dangerous. This is very dangerous. Uh, so. so we, we mentioned before we're getting updates by the second, by the minute, uh, constant updates. We just got an update uh, that the governor, Governor John Bell Edwards, is planning to deliver another update uh, between 8.45 and 9 o'clock this evening. Um, so he, of course, will give us another update on the situation with Barry now on the state level. Uh, so, of course, we'll uh, bring you that uh, when that happens. Yeah, uh, something else. We, yes, definitely. Uh, something else we want to bring you uh, as well. We're getting some more video into our newsroom uh, from Morgan City. Let's pull that up. This is uh, a roof on the home being ripped off. This is in Morgan City. There you go. Whoa. There it is. Uh, danger situation here. And of course, this is what you there it is right there. That roof being blown off this home uh, looks like a mobile home there, uh, possibly a mobile home park in Morgan City. Uh, the roof just being blown off. This shows you uh, the big thing we've been dealing with today is wind. And this shows you just how wicked that wind can be at any moment. Jesse, what was the uh, the, the gust? The top speed, yeah, yeah um, again, uh, we've had some top wind gusts. Obviously, a lot of areas have been in that 50, but obviously just around Morgan City, mm -hmm. that was uh, a little bit closer to the center of right. the storm. Mm -hmm. So again, with that being said, we had the strongest wind. So at least uh, maybe some gusts up to about 90 miles per hour. Wow. I guess the, because roughly Morgan City got the worst of it around Franklin, which is just slightly west of there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's further the south. Strong. Yeah. Uh, and again, further south, just along the coast. So just around Marsh Island and mainly around, um, I believe, what else is that over there? Uh, anything around Vermilion Bay, kind of, uh, I believe is that the Shell Island and uh, right. Sippermore Point, that area over there. Yeah, they got the strongest wind. So we're probably going to see once we get some crews out there, hopefully uh, we partnered also up with our, our next our partner over in Lafayette. So maybe they'll get us some footage on that area. Again, the possible damage is possibly, you know, in that area because um, 
We're probably going to see a lot more of that. Again, right. that one was taken from somebody's cell phone mm -hmm. or cell phone. Mm -hmm. And again, you got to just kind of look at the current structures out there and you see exactly what can happen with 90 mile an hour wind gusts. Well, right. And you know, if, if earlier on before this, and I guess a lot of people might be curious because we were saying, you know, this is not going to be a wind event. It was going to be a rain event, but and this thing really shifted. And is mm -hmm. that why we're seeing uh, more of the winds or is this no, what we were I mean, this was along? this was to be just, expected with the winds. Um, uh, the, what you look at is the hurricane field with this one mm -hmm. was very small and okay. it was really centered. It literally did not stretch out more than obviously mm -hmm. it made landfall around Intracoastal City. Right. And there was not even on the western side there really wasn't hurricane force winds because remember we said everything is lopsided so it was on the east side of the storm. Meaning that a lot of those storms really only extended to about Morgan City and that's exactly where that footage came from. So you could see how that related. Hurricane force winds, a little bit different than tropical storm force winds. Right. And here we're dealing with some tropical storm force winds, so a couple strong gusts in the mix. And yeah, again, you can see that we've got some light poles down. I had one out really in my subdivision. I had a oh, light wow. pole down. So um, I had to go around it before I got here. Uh, was, you, there are power yeah. poles down. There are Tree some trees down. Uh, and trees will start to topple a lot quicker once we start seeing a little bit more rainfall. From you got to remember that. We still have the potential for tropical storm force winds probably until midnight at least maybe a little bit after so yeah the timing on this rain and the winds still can start to add up so even if you had to bet you got power you may not have it by the time right. you wake up in the morning yeah. so just want you to know that because so make sure everything is charged ahead of time because that could be obviously an issue for us as you see still some of those bands still staying offshore at this point but they that's don't want to come ashore uh, it, it, it's is it it has picked up speed you'll start to see the bands to kind of today, circulate in a little bit later on this evening i mean do they go even further down from out of our line of sight well, on there yeah because you're taking a look at doppler radar so when you look at doppler down. radar yeah. it only goes so far sure so you're not seeing it kind of fans it's at the bottom the if you see the bottom of the screen right there that kind of fans out what you're doing is a doppler radar what it does is from where the central point is it scans different levels of the atmosphere. Okay. So, but when you get to a point like that, you're you're kind of shooting through the the, the very very tops of these clouds. Right. So, and if you're still mm -hmm. picking up moisture way out there in the central Gulf, and it's driving through something like that, you're still there is again the potential that there could be a lot more on the way. So, again, the the full cart is still pretty full at this point. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. if you're looking at the back of the truck, it's still pretty full. Yeah. So we're not even close to being done, are we? With, mm -hmm. with this luckily, event. luckily, it's just not on shore yet. Yeah. So but um, it's, it's coming. It's coming. And he's got to watch because again, eventually, as the storm starts to move northward, that obviously everything staying to the southeast of this system will start to inch its way northward. As I'm just curious because you know, again, I'm not a meteorologist. As more of the storm comes ashore, will it move faster? Uh, yeah, that I, the forward speed is expected. As, a speed up a little bit okay. all right and that's a good thing so once we start getting into the next couple hours yeah we may only see it parallel to us with by the time we get to say early evening but as we move forward I think then it starts to speed up a little bit going into the overnight hours and then into Sunday and then obviously after that that's when we really start to kind of see it speed up because that's when other variables like steering winds and stuff like that, the upper levels of the atmosphere come into play because that's when it'll start to kind of just scoop it up and take it out of here. All right, Jesse. You, I, this is, this thing so is much. keeping you guys super busy. <laughs> I, it's just so unlike anything I've ever seen before. Um, but oof, huge. Very disorganized. All right, yeah. something, something else that we want to talk about because we mentioned, we uh, briefly talked about the Coast Guard. Um, and rescues and why we should all heed the warning about not getting out. At one point in the rescue process, uh, or, or process like this, the Coast Guard says it's very difficult for them to try to rescue you. It is important for everybody to understand that although we were able to conduct search and rescue operations this morning in advance of landfall, our ability to do so will deteriorate as this storm continues to come ashore. All right. So again, they just uh, asking you to, to heed those warnings. Yeah, we see. Got, we're we've constantly got getting information. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what you got there? That's right. All right. So, all right. This is now we got an update on power outages. Sixty-nine thousand two hundred ninety. It's the number of customers, um, Energy customers, um, which is uh, that number mm -hmm. is down. A couple of that's, thousand. That's down. Yes. That's so down by a lot. So that's, that's almost down by ten thousand. So. Yeah. 
Was uh, 71 at Yeah, the crews are out there doing a great job, obviously, because yeah. they're quickly getting people back up and running. Yeah, the, the, and, uh, the uh, highest number was 78,000, so yeah. yeah. What I do want to point out, too, and a lot of those, if you look at the map, they're actually on the other side of the Mississippi, so the west oh. side. So a lot, of, a lot of the outages that energy is dealing with right now is closer to the center of Barry at this point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're kind of looking at areas west of there. So West Baton Rouge and down towards Iberville and a lot of areas in between all the way down to about St. Mary. They've got a lot of customers out there. Yeah, and the thing about those the power outages and you know, of course the crews will get to them as soon as they can, but they have a, have a method that they go through. Yeah, they really do. They uh, want to make sure that their crews are safe. So they really do uh, take it step by step. They, they do. Uh, it's not, you know, a, an instant thing, but they do want you to report outages if you have problems. Uh, for Entergy, the number is 1-800-9 outage. And as you've seen, they, they're really working pretty quickly. You said at the height of it, there were 78,000 mm -hmm. so far. You mentioned with the ground saturation and more rain coming, there could be more, more power trees. outages with trees falling. So just be patient, write that number down mm -hmm. if you have Entergy. Uh, of course, uh, those of you who may have Demco, um, that last, the last time we spoke about their outages, there was at 2300. Uh, I think that was just, uh, that was statewide. Um, no, Demco, I think, completely dropped uh, down to like Less than a thousand, I think. Really, so at some been, point. Okay. Been yeah, if somebody can check running. that number for yeah, us, so we can really get that. Yeah, let us know where we stand that. at that point. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're but, working on it, but I'm sure they're anticipating more. Right. So just to get ahead of what's happening. Yeah, here. And, and so the process for you, if, if you aren't familiar with it, the way they do it is they um, tackle the emergency facilities first. So like police departments and emergency responders, they go to them first. Then after that, it's hospitals, also emergency situations there. And then after that, they will go to areas that have maybe a big pocket to where if they go to a particular pole or something yeah. and it'll get more people, people with like power, it. they'll go there and then they'll finally, the last thing on their to-do list, so to say, uh, is uh, maybe more difficult uh, spots to get to. Outages, mm -hmm. yeah. This is some good information. I did not know that. You were trying to get me to say that. <laughs> I learned something I learned. today. You, you got your golden nugget for today. Dion, I like that. But yeah, that's good to know. So don't think that you're being forgotten. They're just there's a process, mm -hmm. and of course, to those the folks who are you know doing the emergency operations, the first responders, they're the people who are out there to keep us informed and keep us safe. So yeah. that's a great plan. And on top of that, also, if the uh, wind speed is more than 30 miles an hour, they can't get into those bucket trucks because oh, it no. puts them in harm's way. And so they wait for the speed, the wind speed, to drop. It, uh, below 30 miles per hour, and then they'll get to fix the uh, power issue. Are you so mm -hmm. knowledgeable? <laughs> I know a little something. I bet you knew all that already, though, didn't you, Jack B? <laughs> Actually, no, I learned something. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know about the bucket. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, again, obviously, keeping an eye on the river stages, still keeping an eye on the rainfall at this point, as you see. Just kind of watching a churn at this point. Everything's still sitting in that southeastern quadrant. So, yeah, we're starting to see those totals really starting to add up. We have got some pictures out there. Obviously, there are some people out there also, too, having some um, fun with Barry out there. We had Barrietta out there. Somebody sent, a viewer sent a picture. So, they're oh. putting, they put a mannequin out there to see how strong the winds are going to be. So I got it. 2,300 from Demco statewide. Oh, statewide. Baton Rouge, only 58 people without power from Demco. So we got that. See, that was so pretty cool. So that's good. <laughs> that's Thank good. you very much, Rachel. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's stick with, uh, with Baton Rouge because, you know, uh, with it being a weather event like this, a lot of uh, services were canceled mm -hmm. and everything. So we just want to let you know, uh, if your garbage pickup was canceled because of this, well, uh, it'll re it will resume Monday along uh, with the North Landfill will reopen on Monday. Recycling pickup will be back on Monday as well as the uh, East Baton Rouge Parish Clerk of Court. That office will reopen on Monday. You know, that got me thinking you said services. I was thinking church services. Tomorrow is Sunday and, you know, this is still going to be going on. I'm, I'm wondering if uh, a lot of people are concerned about being able to get out. And yeah, there's I one got, cancellation. Yeah, I already had one. Uh, St. John, or excuse me, uh, excuse me, Cross of Glory Lutheran is canceled right now. And it's mainly because they're concerned of all the, you know, of all the parishioners and stuff or all the people in uh, the congregation. Um, but also, again, there may be others out there. Yes, let us know. Because again, a lot of this rainfall is going to slide in overnight. Right, because you know, it, it, can, it can be dangerous and you don't want to miss church on Sunday, but yeah, you don't want to risk your life to get there. Uh, so please let us know. We'll bring people up to date. Uh, we, we have lists. We're, we're working on constantly, again, up, uh, updating our VR Proud uh, website and our, our uh, mobile app. 
So uh, we get that information because, you know, as we're heading into Sunday, it's a, uh, you know, a people's day of rest, but it, right. for many people that includes, many people that's the most important part of it. Definitely. To services. So. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, we just want to uh, touch back up on the situation with the uh, East Baton Rouge Parish, the mayor speaking uh, about uh, two hours ago. Um, mm -hmm. And they just want everyone to know that they are prepared for this. Or, and their process is working, but the strongest bands of this is not hitting us until nine o'clock. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, Ish. when you say strongest band, we're talking the heaviest the rainfall. Heaviest. Right. Yeah, we're not talking the strongest wind. So again, okay. later this evening, overnight, and potentially throughout much of Sunday now, uh, could be more of that rain event. I also wanna, I think we got a graphic for this so people can kinda take a snapshot with their phone, just in I'm case if the waters get bad overnight, um, I want to show this graph, but there is one with all of the important numbers that you can call. Okay. Like 211, that's for evacuation and shelter information. You can see it right there, evacuation and shelter information. 311, that is for damage and down power lines. So if you get one of those in your neighborhood, you can call that number immediately to hopefully get your power up and running as soon as possible. For general information, obviously, if you want to find out if you're stuck in your home and you want to know if you can get to uh, the grocery store or the gas station, probably, I'm guessing, with 411. Uh, road closures, 511. That one's also very important. And then, obviously, the other one is emergencies. They want to stress this one, emergencies only, all right? Do not flood 911. Do not flood that phone line because, uh, again, that one is very important. So they want people to know, do not flood 911 unless it, again, is a, an emergency at this point. So you can see all the different numbers out there from 211, 311, 411, 511, and then 911. Take a picture of this just in case, again, if things get a little bit ugly overnight and as we make our way into tomorrow. So you don't have to remember, okay, what was the number? Who do I call? Uh, just in case at this point. So again, we've got some uh, valuable information obviously there with those numbers. And with that, uh, we just want to uh, just remind you that there are no curfews or evacuations in East Baton Rouge Parish, but there are some places that do have them. You can find that on our website as well as our BR Proud app. Uh, shelters in East Baton Rouge. The uh, Southern University's F.G. Clark Activity Center, which is on Harding Boulevard, is open as a shelter. Um, it is staffed by the American Red Cross and has capacity for 400 people. Mm -hmm. uh, the Companion Animal Alliance is providing transportation for animals. Uh, we talked to Jonah a few minutes ago about that. That's also on Southern University's campus. Yes, and mm -hmm. again, uh, we talked about this last night. The Salvation Army, uh, their men's shelter is open. Uh, they have room for 80 people. Uh, they actually have extended their hours uh, through this weather event. Uh, they're they're 20, open 24-7. They're giving these gentlemen who are staying with them uh, three meals a day, a place to shower, uh, a place to sleep, obviously, and a place to wash their clothes. And they're going to keep uh, this shelter situation open tw at a 24-hour level mm -hmm. until this uh, weather event, they say, has passed. So, uh, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. stepping up to do uh, some you know, just to make sure that we're all safe, you yeah. know, that we take care of each other. And safety is the, the key there. And we, I love that you mentioned we take care of each other because here in South Louisiana, <laughs> that's what we do. We, that's so we, true. We it really step is. in at any time. We don't care mm -hmm. your background, your socioeconomic background, whatever it is. We know we you may be in hair. trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to help you out. If you need something to drink. Wait, you giving hair advice eat. now? No, I just had a bad hair. <laughs> that's why I'm going to feel like my hair. So yeah, right, if you, you, you come on. So basically, if you shy. approach John uh, on the street, you just tell her if she's got a good day or a bad hair day. So, yeah, <laughs> so moist outside. All right, but I do. Hey, uh, do I have? don't know. We're gonna try to see if we can get uh, get some of this footage because I'm also kind of getting stuff through social media. Obviously, following our Twitter feed at this point, mm -hmm. and I believe this is just around. Wow, what is that airport? I think in Franklin, uh, where the hurricane force winds, uh, an entire airplane hangar got ripped from the ground. All right. Uh, some pretty uh, amazing footage out oh, there. The entire, yeah, the entire hangar uh, got flipped over and kind of thrown across the airfield. Uh, and I believe, I'm guessing, because I know there's that airport, my guess it would be, I think, somewhere south of US 90. So again, that's right along yeah. where there's that little mini airport. If you take 
US 90, mm -hmm. and just again from Franklin before you step into Morgan City, they're right in between. Right. If you go out of it's, New Iberia, then you hit Franklin. That's, that's southern. There's that area. little like airport hangar, or whatever. I think that got ripped out of the ground uh, due to hurricane force winds. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's bring our conversation back to the church church uh, services. Did we get phone calls? We we got a couple of uh, church cancellations. Park Parkview Baptist. Uh, Progression Church and Renew Church. Uh, okay. Those church uh, services are canceled for tomorrow. And you know, okay. well, well, I was about to say a lot of churches do have service online, but if they're not going to be having services, then the services won't be online. Yeah. So we will uh, we'll keep you update keep updating you on those as we can. Um, Dion mentioned uh, just a, mo a few moments ago that there are a few places that do have curfews, even though here in East Baton Rouge Parish we don't. I have mentioned this at least twice, but uh, I wanted to get to this Livingston Parish story about uh, you know people concerned about flooding, but mm -hmm. uh, Livingston Parish does have a curfew. So um, again, it's from d uh, dusk from dawn, till dawn. From dawn till dusk. This evening, dusk That's is right. first, yes. dusk and then right. till dawn. But we want to mention that if you need to move your car, if you're concerned about flooding, uh, there are several places that they've opened parking lots in Livingston Parish uh, where you can park your vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, all five branches uh, at the Livingston Parish Library. Uh, library announcing that all of those uh, parking lots are available for residents nearby to park their vehicles in case you're concerned about what rising water. Uh, you may know where they are if you live there. The main branch in Livingston is on Iowa Street, uh, LA Highway 43 in Hammond, uh, Highway 190 in Denham Springs, LA Highway 444 in Livingston, and then uh, Outback Road in Denham. And uh, again, yeah, you may already have known they, they may actually be full, but the uh, Livingston Parish Public Schools have opened uh, uh, the parking lots at Grays Creek Elementary, Jubin Park Elementary, and Jubin Park Junior High. Again, this is in case you're concerned about high water. You know, uh, even though we're not getting the rain amounts that we thought, uh, there, there there could still be you know some concern out there, especially after yeah. I know one. Um, yeah, it may not be the 20 plus, but yeah. there still could be some. Uh, you know, we're still talking six to ten, right. maybe a little bit more in some localized areas, and that's still a lot of water. You Better gotta to think be about safe that. Safe than sorry, too. Exactly. So some uh, some good opportunity. That's a, some good information for those of you out in Livingston Parish. But do it again before the curfew goes into effect. Yeah, that. definitely. I know we've been telling people stay off the roads. Is there a way we can show some of the DOT? Oh, that's an excellent idea. Just to, just yeah, to just see. to show if people are heeding the warnings, because it is a little bit like a ghost town out there. At least it was when. I came in. What was that? Five yeah, hours I'll ago? step back. Uh, we're, yeah, we're working it's on that. pretty. It's it, pretty. It's, it's a process, people. Thank you for sticking with us. There we go. Yeah. There, you can still see a few cars out there. Now, this was the area, Jesse. You correct me if I'm wrong. That there was a jackknife um, 18 wheeler there a couple of hours ago. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, they actually cleared up the situation over there. Uh, yeah, probably a wind gust that it was kind of a maybe a lopsided. Uh, I would say tail end, the tractor trailer end of it, and obviously it kind of probably threw him for, kind of flipped over, and it was kind of sitting on that concrete median in the middle. So they have cleared that up, so it looks like the interstate is now wide open because even the on-ramp was closed from 110. So you couldn't really go westbound. You had to kind of just wait it out. You know, on my way in, speaking of 18-wheelers, and if you notice, the, m most of the little bit of traffic that's coming there over the bridge is in the form of 18-wheelers, big, big rigs. Uh, I was on my way in, and, you know, we hear so much about, we've actually done stories about how people who drive big rigs don't like coming through Baton Rouge because it's right. such a bottleneck. Yeah. But on my way here, I was thinking, I bet they like it today. Yeah, this is, this is, don't go out. Yes, but no, this don't. this would be the day, like, oh, there's no But these, these guys are, you know, doing interstate travel. They're yeah. coming from one, they're just smooth sailing through Baton Rouge today. Hopefully, no more incidents like we saw with that one jack. Yeah, vehicle. we want to definitely try to avoid those. And so if you, if you don't need to be out, don't go out because, you know, it's 5.30 on the Saturday evening and um, we've got a lot more with this storm on its way. Oh, absolutely. Just be careful out there if you do have to go out. Again, officials, you know, we, we say this every time there's a weather event. Officials tell us just stay off the roads, uh, un, you know, unless you absolutely have to go out. Um, just, you know, better to be safe than sorry. Uh, stay inside, watch some Netflix, Hulu, whatever. Right. Watch us. <laughs> watch I'm us. not encouraging you watch to watch, us. but you know, if you want to watch a movie or yeah. something, we don't have A little, have a little um, <laughs> NBC, Local 33, Fox 44, and chill. That's what, we can, that's what we can do, like keeping you coffee. informed. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we want to show you something because I, I say this all the time. We don't really get to tell the full story unless 
you help us with this and right. we see it through your eyes. We've got some amazing drone video that we just got into our newsroom. This is out of uh, Plaquemines Parish. This is the Plaquemines Levee. Actually, take a look at this. This Whoa. video showing the levee being overtopped near the town of Myrtle Grove as the flood water pushes into the parish. Now, state officials say they're concerned about just how long the levee can hold up before it gives way. This was the big concern before this storm even made landfall. Now, the nearby homes have been evacuated. This water is rushing toward Highway 23. Just take a look at it. This is and it's not blowing. It is no, that level it is and that it's going level. over. Exactly. The, that's just how high the water is there. Uh, if authorities are forced to close the highway, which I would be surprised if they don't, right. uh, it would cut off a 50 mile stretch of road that runs south all the way to the town of Venice on the Gulf. And we just know how important Venice is to our state's economy when it comes to seafood and everything, right. uh, leaving everyone stranded in between. And there were reports uh, of people who didn't evacuate, and so if if those well, that's still the case in a lot hold, of hold true, yeah. uh, they're they're stranded, they're stuck there. Oh my goodness, that is just just it's breathtaking and terrifying all at the same time to look at this. And again, you said they were they're not sure how long the levee will hold if right. if it uh, yeah. And and the thing about it, water. I say this all the time. Water is an amazing thing. Yeah. Because. You, so you, powerful. It's, it's extremely that. powerful. You know, we, we use it for cooking and we drink it and things like that, but we never really understand the power of water, until unfortunately, so. until situations like this. And these situations are just unfortunate to where we have this. Um, it's, the video's amazing, but it really gives you a little perspective of how when we say things that we're not just saying it for lip service. Well, when you're looking at these homes, you, you notice they are built up. They're, they're right. built up for this reason um, or, you know, for flooding purposes. I don't know if this particular reason, mm -hmm. but uh, this, and I don't, I don't know if this is something that's unprecedented in that area or, but it is definitely something to make you sit back and say, whoa. You know, I was just driving uh, my daughter to and from camp not long ago and uh, passing over the, what do you call that, going to New Orleans? You know, I'm not oh, good the, with um, name. The spillway. The spill, and uh, yes, and, and the, my daughter says, hey, is the spillway still open? I said, well, I guess so, because you could see the water doing just like that, and it was fascinating to me to and see. And it's so high. Yes, so high and, and moving like that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it really puts you, makes you in awe of the world that we live in, just nature. Yeah, it's an incredible drone video. Uh, this this kind of also shows you how, how technology really helps us uh, be able to tell this story and give you uh, the different points of view here. Uh, this Once again, this is from the Plaquemines Levee, water overtopping it near the town of Myrtle Grove. I uh, want to bring you up to date. Uh, we were talking earlier about curfews. Uh, we did mention that there's not one at this point in East Baton Rouge Parish, um, and there we've got a few, but we did get this word in that West Baton Rouge uh, does have a curfew now. That will be from 8 p.m. tonight till 6 tomorrow morning. So 8 tonight, it's probably dusk till dawn-ish, yes. but 8 p.m. They gave specific times here to 6 a.m. If you're in West Baton Rouge Parish, just know that uh, that's, their, that's what they want you to do. Yeah, so. definitely. Um, something else, a little update um, for um, churches. Living Faith Christian Center uh, is doing one service instead of two. Uh, that service tomorrow morning at 1030, right. and that's and, in Baton Rouge. And if I know our folks behind the scene, there's probably a story specific to churches already created yes. on our webpage. So as we get those uh, service times or cancellations or combinations, as they've done there, mm -hmm. uh, we will post them uh, on our uh, BR, BR Proud website, and uh, you can find that on our BR Proud app as well. And if you don't have the BR Proud app yet, Get it. It's, get it. It's really it's handy. Tool. You get some great information, push alerts. This man does them all the time. <laughs> he loves it. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, alert. I wonder if Dion did that one. But um, yeah, it's great information um, that, uh, you know, kind of will help you through your day mm -hmm. on most days, particularly on a day like today. Yeah, definitely. Lots of information coming in. Also, uh, you know, I said before that we can't really tell the story without uh, seeing it from your eyes. Take a picture when, don't put yourself in harm's way. We don't right. want that. But take a picture maybe just from your doorway or something like that for what you're seeing out, out in your neighborhood. And if you even do a video, we'll take that. Yeah. But one piece of advice, do the videos like this because it makes them TV ready. 
Right. Um, and because you've ever seen video that was done uh, on someone's cell phone, and you see okay. all those weird white things on the yeah, side, that's or that what blurry that's from. stuff on the side, is because we're making it TV ready. So if you just help us out just a little that's bit. That's how my video works. <laughs> <laughs> Do you record your videos like this, um, and you know what? That's also a, a tool that mm -hmm. you can use not just in situations like this uh, to help us tell the story, but if you go to a concert or maybe like a, your child's recital or something like that, record them like this, and when you post it on social media, it'll It'll be uh, perfect size for everybody True. to see the full picture. Yeah, see, I'm learning the little things. It's a little. Thing. I don't shoot a lot of videos, but you know, if I saw something interesting, I would share it with you. Boom, that way. All right, um, we have got so much going on. Uh, Jesse is, uh, you know, constantly getting updated information, and we're constantly getting updates. Yes, you know, you don't, you don't see our, our great crews behind and the scenes. They never walk around to my side of the desk. By the way, they always go. I'm like. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> uh, Paul, uh, our audio guy, is just saying, yes, we are great crews. Yes, yes you guys are great they crews. They're doing a great because, job. You know, if it, if it weren't for the hard work that's happening behind the scenes, we wouldn't be able to bring you the information that uh, we're constantly getting all the time. <laughs> all right, so um, the Bridge Church, um, I'm, I'm guessing, so the Bridge Church is, is that canceled tomorrow. Okay. okay. The Bridge Church uh, services are canceled Ooh, tomorrow. Um, Acacia Church, um, one service tomorrow at 1030. Um, Baton Rouge First Church of Nazarene, that church is, uh, those services are canceled. And Crossfire Youth Ministry is canceled tomorrow. Well, I am glad that I mentioned that because, yeah, a lot of people I know, it just because we're the night before, people are starting to say, what do I right, do? What That's do what I people do? do on Sunday. So yeah. they're making plans for their day tomorrow. Um, well, now these folks know. Yeah, and you can hold your church outfit for next Sunday. Yeah, because uh, if you're like me, you got it picked out. <laughs> I don't, I don't have mine picked out already. Outfit. I figured I'd be here all night, but uh, yeah, you got to, I bet you do that. I do. <laughs> I'm guilty. Guilty as charged. Oh, gosh. Uh, all right. Um, do we, so, let's see. Let, let's tell them where we've got people. Um, yeah, now, we is have people. Jonah still out at that animal shelter? Do the emergency shelter? Or, or are we moving him or at is the he, moment? Yeah, yeah, because they kind of, we're kind of trying to keep up with, you know, what's happening where. Um, we've got uh, our Crystal Whitman out in uh, Livingston Parish, uh, mm -hmm. keeping updated with what, what's happening out there. And then uh, Kara St. Cyr is in Ascension Parish. So uh, we've got lots of boots on the ground, as they say. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they've got a, their videographers out there with them. So hopefully they're all being safe. But uh, yes, yeah, so much happening. They're trying to get to every place so you know if you have things going on in these different locations and uh, you think it's something worth seeing or and you can't do it yourself uh, let us know yeah definitely all right someone was trying to say something this is live tv folks we always what? we have these things in our ears uh so our producers can communicate with us so all right, so we're getting our crews in line because you, this thing is just constantly changing. Yeah. So they're changing their positions. So they're getting into position uh, for uh, bringing you new updates uh, when they can get them. All right, something we want to talk about uh, because we, we've been um, kind of going parish by parish pretty much, uh, yeah. letting you know about things. But um, I don't know if we may have maybe a live camera we can take. I know we had that uh, live camera from, uh, from New Orleans. Um, if we could take that again, because the thing about it is that a lot of people who had plans to go to the city this weekend, there was a huge sorority who had their convention that was just, they, they canceled it because of the, uh, the weather and then uh, Delta Sigma Theta, they ended up uh, donating thousands of meals um, be, because they couldn't really do uh, everything that they wanted to do. Um, and things in New Orleans, the city itself seems to Bourbon Street. Here we go. So this is probably the cleanest and the clearest we will ever see Bourbon Street <laughs> uh, in New Orleans. Um, but you can see still people out on the Fame Street um, getting to where they need to go. Um, rain not stopping the ever so famous Bourbon Street. So that just shows you um, the resilience of yeah, it just keeps on going. Um, uh, something, I, something else um, I, I saw on social media. Um, so this is the South Shore uh, in um, New Orleans. On the North Shore, uh, parts of Mandeville were, were flooded. Um, and I'm sure we're working on that to try to bring some video of that to you. 
um, but we will get to those pictures later. Uh, you know, we mentioned uh, the update on the, we're constantly updating curfews. I was just checking our website, as a matter of fact. Uh, of course, they probably got this up just as they got it out to us. They're so fast in there. Uh, we appreciate all the people doing the work behind the scenes. Um, but again, uh, to update those curfews, there's, there actually are a number throughout South Louisiana, and we know we have people watching throughout and people mm -hmm. who have loved ones who live in different places. Again, West Baton Rouge Parish, uh, 8 tonight till 6 tomorrow morning. St. Helena Parish, uh, 8 p.m. till 8 a.m. West Feliciana Parish, uh, 8 to 6 a.m. Um, Livingston, again, dusk till dawn, we said that already. Uh, Thibodeau, they have a curfew as well. It looks like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. there. Um, Iberville Parish, midnight till daybreak. Uh, Terrebonne Parish also with one uh, 10, uh, let's see, this was, uh, I think, updated last night. So that no update on Terrebonne Parish at this point today. Um, but as we get that in new information mm -hmm. as to the overnight hours, we will let you know about that. But again, you can check all of this on our website. I'm, you know, sometimes I see things here even faster than I know them. And this is kind of how we're getting a lot of our information from our folks in the newsroom. Um, but uh, constantly being updated. So this is just a good good tool to have next to you. Yeah, definitely. We always have it next to us. Uh, something I, we always, I keep saying this, but we are constantly getting updates. <laughs> uh, we just got something, um, Oshner is announcing that it's urgent care clinics will reopen tomorrow. Oh, that's good news. Um, so if um, there are, the, uh, the hospital and emergency departments will remain open, but if you have something, you, you may have a little tickle in your throat or you're just not feeling that well, uh, those uh, urgent care clinics will reopen tomorrow. Absolutely great information to have. I keep getting this weird little band on my iPad. I, I'm a little bit, just a tiny bit, technologically challenged. That, just that a little bit. That much, because you, you, you're <laughs> I not have been that learning, challenged. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, I keep getting this weird little band here. But uh, yeah, there's so much going on. Uh, we've got you know all this uh, weather information going onto our website. Jesse's constantly working. When he's not up here doing all of uh, his updates, he's uh, putting things up. He's getting new information mm -hmm. in and, and uh, putting it in five different locations. Um, so he has been very, very busy today. Um, you can actually watch this if you're having to be leaving the house. Don't do that. You're not supposed to get on the roads if you don't have to. <laughs> but if you do, if you have to get out somewhere um, and you get to somewhere where you're not, where there's a TV around uh, and you have your phone handy, you can live stream. We're live streaming yes, on, uh, our on the web. And so you can just pull it up, click on the live stream. And uh, actually when you, <laughs> again, a little technology, technologically challenged here just a little bit but I am learning um, but when you click on it uh, when I first clicked on it earlier today I was like it's not running because you have to click here where it says click here yes so it, it's not it's not complicated but you know <laughs> it, don't be like me and say wait it's not happening yeah you, you do have to do Gotta something click. once you click it then you click something else and so we try to make the instructions as clear as possible and as easy as user friendly as possible mm -hmm. so you know so we can all get the information no matter if you are at home or you know you may walk away from the TV and you've got your tablet with you who walks away from any I mean you either have the TV or the iPad right. or the so you computer, just take you know, this with you yeah laptop and so you, you got it. You got it at your fingertips. Uh, do you remember a time when we weren't disconnected? I, I, I do. sort of do, but it's almost <laughs> it's difficult so to remember. Well, you know, I, did you want to come in here? Because Jesse, Jesse has walked up. He he seems to have He's got gotten a, a lull in in his updating. Yeah, and uh, now he wants to update us. Besides, uh, yeah, going. Uh, I just got a little tea, you know. Something oh, did kinda, you get to rest? Oh, <laughs> I got a little. There you go. Yeah, I got a little tea, you know, for <laughs> the throat. For well. Um, yeah, here obviously is the latest <laughs> update. So again, we are going to continue to obviously keep you forward, get a little bit more information out mm -hmm. there. So far again, the rain. I still want to point out here, looking big picture, that we got to, models, they haven't, uh, I know everybody's saying, yeah, I get it, I get it. No, the models aren't doing what they're supposed to do. We haven't got that amount of rainfall. But again, there still is a ton of available moisture out in that Gulf of Mexico that could still move inland. You, you gotta realize, what? this is crazy, Jesse. Stop you know, you it. Got, you gotta realize that it's not that far, <laughs> if you look at it on the radar, that no. the center of Barry is literally, yes, Barry is weakening. And again, we're getting away from the threat of wind, but it's still a it's lot of rain. moisture southeastern quadrant out there. And obviously, if we can flip it over to the Doppler radar, I'll show you some of those outer bands out there. We'll take big picture. 
And again, main thing is still those heavier rains sliding through Franklin, through Lafitte at this point or in Lafayette. Um, yeah, still a couple showers out there. For us, it's been a slow but steady race today, just that misty rainfall. But when I step back and show you the big picture out there, notice there is no cutoff at the tail end. You yeah, see just, that? It seems like it goes on it, forever. Can you see that? It's the storm yeah. that That is end. the reason why we still have concern out there because right. that tail end is not cut off yet. Well, is it, you know, I keep, when we, when you sh we show the cone of, I don't know if it's a cone of uncertainty anymore, it kind of seems uh, at least somewhat certain because it's been similar for quite a while. It, but is it still moving, Jesse? Is it, is it still moving, uh, what is that, east? And north at the same time, or is it moving? Are you okay? No, you're, are you talking the, about the actual whole, band? The, the whole thing just it, it, be, and because of the direction it's turning. I guess maybe it has the appearance of moving that way, but is it just moving northward right now? It generally north, okay. north, northwest, obviously. North, so, yeah, okay. so there is that kind of slight yeah. angle. So instead of coming straight up from the coastline, say from Intracoastal City and going right. straight up to Lafayette, mm. right. it actually is making a little bit jog further west, okay. and that's kind of moving it closer to. Uh, areas such as the Crowley area, okay. uh, Scott. Now, almost probably right now at this point, my guess would be already across I-10 or currently crossing I-10, right. uh, moving uh, northbound at this point. And just kind of give you some of these estimates. Again, if you see those bands out in the Gulf, these are just radar estimates. And that's just been, obviously the number up top says last 48 hours. Mm -hmm. But if you kind of look at the big picture here, a lot of that, what you're seeing there, again, is probably off screen. So. The heavier rainfall is so again there still is that potential moving forward uh, as you notice also again we've got 70 hundred or 7500 so three quarters of an inch of rainfall even though it doesn't seem like we had a uh, much rain here is uh, that because it's just been just so little it's been so constant throughout the day it's been stretched out in light misty throughout the entire but slowly starting to add up and again that totals from midnight so you go from midnight through now uh, again, you can see that that really is starting to kind of add up across the area. Uh, some other areas, six tenths in Belt Chase, five, uh, just over a, about a half an inch over in the slide air, slide L area at this point. And then obviously as we continue to move forward, you'll notice it's again, the wind's still kind of gusting out there. Uh, we've still got some gusts here, just shy of 40 miles per hour. A lot of other areas still seeing those winds uh, directly off the Gulf at about 55 in New Iberia. So. Uh, I believe we're going to be going back into more of a traditional newscast soon. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're set. We're yeah. gearing up that for our at the top of the hour. Our top of the hour for our six o'clock news. Yep. Um, and we're going to. I think we're going to dump out a Fox. Yes, we're going to. Temporarily, gonna, uh, but we'll we'll be here for the next seven or so minutes. For those of you who are watching us on Fox, uh, if you want to continue watching us and you're watching on Fox, just change the channel. Uh, we'll be uh, doing a, 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 a new six p.m. news in just a few minutes but yeah we're we're not going anywhere just yet so. mm -hmm. um, but do, yeah do you need to get ready is the question no 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 I'm, I'm <laughs> good to go ready. Uh, no main thing is because I just wanted to point out that I think we're gonna hopefully get some more footage too because we're working Excellent. with our partners over in Lafayette so yeah obviously you see those winds that are hurricane strength around areas such as Morgan City we got that you know we saw that amazing footage of a lot of uh, rooftops kind of getting ripped off yeah. uh, on some mobile homes and stuff in that area, in the Morgan City area. It looked like the airport in Franklin, one of the hangars got ripped off the ground and went tumbling down the runway. Um, so again, there is wind damage out there. We're still, however, fortunately looking at the rainfall as our immediate threat here in Baton Rouge and surrounding areas. So as you see out there, we got gusts, or excuse me, the current wind speeds are now sitting at 65. It continues to move north, northwest now at seven miles per hour. So that's moving kind of away from us, but you still got to deal with the big picture out there because obviously a lot of that rainfall will be a few miles from the center. Yeah, some of the heavier bands are going to probably sit across the Atchafalaya Basin at this point. And then, but still, those bands will start to set up. And it gets kind of confusing because if you notice, the path kind of goes a little bit to the western part of the state. As you see, kind of around Fort Polk, over in that general vicinity, but then it starts to hook back, and I still—that's where we're going to still continue to see that concern because when you go back, and I'll step it back here quick. You, uh, sorry, jump into this one. You'll see that those rain bands almost extend back into areas such as Corpus Christi. You see how far? So again, that is all trailing on the tail end of the system if it doesn't eventually kind of get 
somebody doesn't cut the tail off on the system, all right? Again, there are some factors kind of uh, in the mix here, like that dry air pocket just a little bit above this system, Barry, and that's really the rain, main reason we haven't seen the rainfall quite yet at this point. I think I still got it on the image here. I'm gonna kind of jump forward. Uh, it's just showing you that we are now looking at all tropical storm warnings. So they've dropped all hurricane warnings across the area. So that's uh, definitely some good news here. But as you see, again, just north of the system, north of I-10 and I-12, still that dry air in place. And you can kind of see how the tops, well, as soon as those storms try to make their way inland, well, they eventually disappear. So it's kind of getting not so much wrapped around the center of the system, but it's just kind of getting... It's really just kind of putting a, a roadblock on the storms from developing as the storms try to kind of wrap around the center of Barrie at this point. And you can still see, again, ton of moisture in the Gulf of Mexico. So watch your future cast out there, and you'll see that, again, by Sunday morning, overnight going into Sunday, we're still looking at a potential for a lot of rainfall out there. Still showing you rain all the way through Sunday at this point. And maybe even going into late Sunday on Monday, we could see a couple more heavy rain, uh, rainfall bands out there. Other models are still keeping us. And you see here, this is another one showing intense rainfall all the way through Monday at this point before we finally start to get a break. Flash flood watch in, in effect until Sunday could. Depends on the rain totals tonight and throughout the day tomorrow, but that could extend and that has not been adjusted. They still want to keep it there because of the, the American model, the European model, and all of, again, our mesoscale models right now, still showing a bunch of rainfall. So uh, it just may be on hold a little bit, maybe on hiatus. Again, they're, they're putting a, <laughs> again, we're just waiting uh, for, that uh, for that school bell to ring, and it hasn't quite yet. So it's still, the potential is still out there, um, even though we haven't seen much today. And unfortunately, if you had to cancel your plans today, we had winds out there, we had power lines down, we had uh, stoplights out. So, I mean, for a lot of areas, especially close to the center of Barrie at this point, yeah, there was some damage out there. So there were some concerns out there, obviously. Um, and yeah, rain still will be an ongoing issue, potentially overnight. So what I'm gonna suggest is continue to check back, check your river stages. Uh, they're gonna adjust those forecasts, obviously going into the overnight and into early tomorrow morning because we need to really see the pace that this rain is coming down. Pace is gonna definitely be the big takeaway. Yeah, we could see a couple pockets here. How much between each pocket of rainfall do we see also? That is one of many big questions, mm -hmm. isn't it? That we've got just wait, we just have to wait and see, right? And again, just to kind of show you the spread on some of these models, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because some go really high, some go low, some push it further to the west, some go further to the east at this point. So as you notice, again, showing you another one, still keeping that bullseye with the latest run. But it goes higher than the last one. You saw, exactly. As far as our totals. Anyway, uh -huh. I'm, I'm particularly looking at Baton Rouge just to keep and just watch how different. it kind of adds up going into Monday into that 8-inch category. Yeah all the way through Tuesday at this point. So you gotta, I, I hate to say it, I mean, yeah, Barry's been running into a lot of factors out there today, but it's still alive. Yeah. Well, That's what I wanna, uh, there's still a heartbeat. Sure, no <laughs> You know, no kind of put it in that. medical terms, there's still mm -hmm. a heartbeat, there's still a pulse, cool. okay, with this system. So uh, that's what I want people to know. Did, uh, I, maybe I misunderstood, but the, when we first started talking about this, when we were think, I was thinking it could, this could be lasting up until Monday, and I thought that was amazingly long. It's for, still and on now schedule it's to last through Monday, but maybe beyond some. Beyond that, right? Now? Well, there's always that potential, mm -hmm. especially when you get the tail end, some of those lingering showers kind of hanging on at this point. Right. So, yeah, there's always that potential until, you know, again, if the system, we expected landfall. Originally, models were saying probably overnight and early right. in the morning. Well, right. landfall ended up being one o'clock just right. because the system was moving so smooth. So you got to think about push everything. You got to push everything back. You mm -hmm. know, you get a flight delay and everything pushes back a little bit, right? right. So guess what? It's the same things happening here a little bit. So 
maybe a little bit of a waste of your day, but hopefully you got to spend some time with the family <laughs> and once, you know. There's always a bright side. I mm -hmm. did see both of my children before I left the house today. They were both awake kind of early. So. I thought you were going to hunker down Is and stay true? here overnight. Maybe Shelby Knox was still sleeping. Yeah, I, well, everybody else was gone. So well, I was because like, you said, you know, it was it was cool last night. Yeah, so. and yeah, I, I had no trouble making it back. It was super windy though, but you know how <laughs> how many times have we you know in the past covering uh, hurricanes and uh, tropical storms that it's been windy and super rainy? So it was you know it wasn't too bad getting here, but I'm glad I made it. And, you know, everybody just stay safe if you absolutely have to leave the roadway. Yeah, definitely, and that's that's leave, been our advice. Um, we want to make you remember to stay safe, stay off the roads if you don't need to be there. All right. So we're going to, uh, for those of you who are watching us on Fox, uh, we will see you later. We're going to have to, we're going to sign off here right now. And we're going to do our six o'clock show on NBC. So join us there.